our next guest uh, from the Spring Games, Melissa Gentili. And I'm going to go ahead. Can I call you Skeeter? Because that's Please. the only way I know you is by, the, by Skeeter. If you call me Melissa, I'm going to think I'm in trouble. Well, yes, I got to be honest with you. Fine. Somebody said, hey, we have Melissa from the, the Spring Games coming yep. on to talk about the event. And I'm like, who? Yep. They're yep. like, Skeeter. I'm like, oh, why mm -hmm. didn't you say so? Yeah, why didn't you just say her? <laughs> well, welcome back to Polk County. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. Of course, the Spring Games, we, we just talked to Rob from Russ, Matt. Mm -hmm. So this is the softball side of things, and yeah. it just continues to get bigger and bigger. This is... Let's see, how many this years? This is year 16. Yeah. Because in the COVID year, when many others weren't able to operate, right. we figured out a way to create the Big Ten bubble, and we hosted the entire Big right. Ten conference. Yep. Um, and so, yes, yeah, this is year 16. Well, we're excited to have you back here in, in Polk County. And um, the entirety of the event is about 400 teams that um, across all locations. Polk mm -hmm. County gets about half of that uh, yeah. right here through the Division Three. So talk about... You know, I mentioned yeah. it when we were talking with Rob, there's different levels of competition. Okay. And uh, certainly we enjoy having uh, D3 here in Polk County, but kind of explain to the viewers at home uh, maybe what the event is and why they would want to come out and check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, again, thanks for thanks for having me. There's a lot of parallels as I was listening to, to Russ Matt um, in, in what softball brings. We have uh, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, and JUCO teams. So as you mentioned, about 400 teams. Uh, across the event and here in Polk County we'll be using Diamondplex and Auburndale primarily. Last year we hosted D2 teams here in Polk County and this year we switched it up and we are hosting D3 teams here in Polk County which is our largest contingent of, of teams and uh, so yeah the, the great thing about our event is that the community and anybody coming to this event you can see games across all uh, platforms and across all divisions so um, you can see some of the top we, we just hosted Michigan last last weekend and Minnesota and Butler and and then you'll you'll see some JUCO teams and NAIA teams and, and some of the the top I think here in Polk County now you're ready for this of the top 10 nationally ranked preseason D3 teams the spring games is hosting four of them here in Polk County Wow so we're, we're bringing we're bringing the whole spectrum, but top tier teams here to Polk County uh, to play for everybody. So we're really, really excited about that. The um, so 230 teams, 230 mm -hmm. D3 teams. Yes. Um, the the great thing about the the spring games, I've been out to to take photos and do whatnot, is the crowds come out. It oh, yeah. it uh, you know to pull up to the softball complex and see it absolutely packed. Um, yeah, tell us about the, the fan yeah. experience. It's, they've got to want to come down here this time of year. Who doesn't? Yeah, yeah who doesn't? Absolutely. There's a reason we live here, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think some of them use the excuse of coming to watch their kid play, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the weather is certainly a factor as well. So, you know, a lot of these teams, most of these teams aren't able to get out on the field before this event. And so, um, you know, from the fan experience side, we, we do put a lot of time and effort into that fan experience and making it fun for them and partnering with, with some, you know, food vendors and things like that. And we've created a selfie station, you know, this year so they can take selfies of them of themselves and, you know, some of those fun things because, you know, again, we want them to have a great experience, not just coming to watch their daughter play or um, or their spouse uh, umpire. You know, we, we've mm -hmm. talked about that. We have over 100 umpires that come down from across the country as well. So it's not just the teams, it's the, uh, the officials and our staff that we bring in from around the country. Um, so we're all really getting to benefit from that. But uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see a lot of sunburns the first, first few <laughs> weeks uh, as they get down here. Well, and you use the word experience. That's, that's not just a, a buzzword. That's not a, right. uh, you know, that is the core. You know, it's not a trendy thing, I guess is what I was trying to say. And it's important. It's not only important for the the, the life the, the lifeblood of the spring games, yeah. um, but also for the local community because mm -hmm. sometimes this is the introduction of that individual to this location. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it with the Detroit Tigers having their spring training here for yeah. almost 90 years. There's so many Michiganders that live in Polk County now. So this is the first uh, introduction of Polk County um, so it's important from the facility to the accommodations to the restaurants. So it's one of the reasons this show exists is to get uh, Polk County residents and, and businesses ready to go for an event like this. But 
How do you guys embrace that, not only from what happens on the field, as Rob was talking about, but uh, what happens locally as far as that experience and how you can enhance it for them? Yeah, love, thank you for asking that question because it really is about the experience. It's more than just softball games. Um, you know, these teams, many of the D3 teams that you're going to be watching here in Polk County have had to fundraise for this trip. And they tend, tend to spend anywhere from thirty to $45,000, which is, by and large, bigger than some of their budgets. And they fundraise the majority of that to come down here. And so we want to honor that commitment that these teams have made and that investment that they've made to create the total experience, to partner with, uh, you know, with great companies within the local communities to offer their teams discounts with restaurants. And, um, and also with our scheduling, we want to be mindful of our scheduling. If we have them at the, at the fields playing until midnight, they're not out in the restaurants eating. Right? And so we're mindful of that as well as we go through and we're doing our scheduling. I think our, our last uh, slated game is in the 4 o'clock slot, so it allows teams to, to still get out and, uh, and enjoy the community and interact with the community. I mean, I think that's the most fun part is mm -hmm. you go into a restaurant, you see a team, and they're interacting with everybody else sitting around. Hey, what are you guys doing? You know, when are you playing? And then all of a sudden you get these fans that didn't even know, you know the team was in town right. showing up for games. And that's just that, that's the, the best for me as a tournament organizer and event organizer to see that experience and that connection um, with the local community. Well, we, we have the same reaction. Uh, my wife and I have a kind of a standing joke. If we'll go to a restaurant here in Polk County and, and you see the team over there, um, at this point, she's like, don't say it. Because I used to say, you know, whatever business it was, like, you're welcome, so and so. Just, yeah. <laughs> just as a joke, yes. you know, because these events, yes. to your point, don't yeah. just show up. It's about Thanks. relationships. You talked about the yeah. city of Winter Haven. You talked about the uh, city of Auburndale. There's some things in the works with the city of Bartow. It's important to keep moving forward because if you're not moving forward with these events, because of all the things that you described with mm -hmm. fundraising and the like, those teams may not show up. So if the, the number of teams shrinks, the impact shrinks, mm -hmm. less jobs, and it just spirals out of control in a very negative way. Absolutely, and, and I think that's what having great partners like Polk County on our side that, that understand that and get the investment. I know there's some really good long-term plans for mm -hmm. Diamondplex and Auburndale, and we're really looking, looking forward to that. But in the meantime, they're, they're nice facilities for us right now. Um, but those partnerships are so important because these teams have a lot of options of where sure. to go. Um, you know, there's, t there's tournaments popping up left and right, you know, all over the place. But when you, when you do things the right way, when you treat people the right way, they want to come back to you. And, uh, and our, our grounds crew, from our gate staff to the officials, everybody that those people interact with when they're here, leave an impression. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we're leaving the best impression that we, that we possibly can. And so these partnerships are so big. I mean, what a lot of people don't understand is, like you talked about, um, you know, sometimes they're like, gosh, all the traffic this time of year, right? Yeah. And all the restaurants yeah. are full. And, <laughs> you know, but uh, the reality is an event like ours brings in over a million dollars into the economic impact, right? So these teams are filling up at the gas stations. These teams are eating in the restaurants. They're staying in the hotels. They're staying in the, uh, in the housing and things like sure. that. So it's a lot more than just what you see on the softball field. Yeah, a lot millions goes into of it. dollars of economic impact and uh, certainly important because it creates jobs. And just a reminder to those at home, it's the reason we don't pay personal income tax right. in the state of Florida yes. is tourism and sports tourism. So That's right. So tell us some of the background of the spring game. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, because this is a, this is a, a storied organization. So. Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. So 16, 16 years. And uh, we started out, uh, Dot Richardson is our, is our founder. Olympian, maybe you've heard of her. She's a legend in our game. Oh, yeah. uh, just fantastic woman. She's the head coach at Liberty University right now. Uh, so I, I believe they're playing in Puerto Vallarta uh, this, this oh, week. Wow. Yes. Okay. But, uh, but Dot started the company um, way back 16 years ago when it was just uh, Division Three teams. And so it's exciting for us to still, still see that Division Three is our largest group of uh, teams that participate in the spring game since that's really what started this company um, 16 years ago. Mm. And um, you know, just the evolution of, of the company, Division One was added uh, when I came on board uh, now four years ago. And so now we're able to offer uh, games across all divisions. Mm. 
uh, whereas before it was Division II, Division III, NAI, and JUCO. So now we, we've got the whole gamut of teams, and, and it's exciting. And I, I love the points um, in the segment I was, I was watching with Russ, Matt, where you said, you know, sometimes people get locked in and they think there's only one level that they can play at. Mm -hmm. And that's what I just love when I see these youth teams come to our games right. and they're exposed to different levels of ball. Um, they can see D2, D3, NAI, and JUCO and figure out what is the best fit for them. Because just because maybe they have the skill level to play at a Division One school mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that Division One school is a great fit for them personally. There's yeah. a whole lot of options out there. And so I just uh, am proud of the fact that the Spring Games is, is able to offer the opportunity for these youth teams to come in and, and get a feel for what the different programs and uh, universities have to offer them. Well, you talk, going back to the partnership, and I know we're running a little bit short on time, but uh, uh, when COVID did hit, mm -hmm. you guys were in town for, for the spring games. Oh, and yes. of course, Rob was in town. And, yes. and as trying as that time was, there were a few positives that came out of it. And the relationship between Polk County and the spring games or Polk County and Rust Mag got even mm -hmm. stronger because yeah. there was some uncharted territory uh, mm -hmm. that, that we were in, at least for those of us in the last century, and uh, figuring stuff out. But had the relationships not been so good prior to that, mm -hmm. it would have been even more trying. So we appreciate you. We appreciate the economic impact uh, that you and the Spring Games bring to Polk County. Real quick before we let you go, yeah. what's the website? I'm assuming the schedule's on there. And, and oh, yeah. just like we said with Rob, you want to continue to go to that website because we won't say we won't say rain. No, no, no. I just did. Something good. <laughs> yeah. Sunshine, sunshine, oh, we go. sunshine right. and butterflies. Is yeah, all so it's on me now. But what's the months. website and uh, kind of give us the, the yeah. time frame that the games will be going on? Absolutely. So we started last weekend mm -hmm. with our first Division One game, uh, February 9th. And our last game will go until March 26th. Uh, here in Polk County, we start February 26th at Diamondplex. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, we'll open up at Auburndale. Where you can go to find everything. The great thing is it's user friendly. It's part of this experience. We have an yep. app. You can download the Spring Games app. You can search by division. You can search by team. You can search by complex. Everything you need is on there. When we update it, it's updated live on the app. You can also access it through our website, which is thespringgames.com. But not too many people don't have a smartphone these days, so the app is definitely the way to go. Just search the Spring Games and you'll see us. All right. Skeeter, thank you so much. Appreciate the time. Yeah. We know uh, you're very you. busy, so we'll let you get back to it. But uh, uh, once again, thank you for coming to Polk County. Thank you. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this interview and want to watch more Sports Central, click the video below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.